Oh, I get to take a seat and watch my truck get loaded. That's, that's what I get to do today. Uh, this is that $2,100 $2, load going to uh, Minnesota, like 400 and, I don't know, it's 400, 440 miles. So, you know, pretty easy. You just chill here and they do the rest. So, uh, I guess I'll show you, uh, show you me tarping it and everything. And I don't know, chain it, I don't know, we'll see what this stuff is. I was told it was rebar, but it, it looks like it might be, I don't know, giant angled steel. And I don't know, the broker didn't know if it needed tarp or not, but I guess we'll see. It paid enough that I don't care about tarping it. So, um,. Oh, and uh, and this go around. I have a 53 foot trailer now, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes too. So, all right. I'll... Didn't really have a marker, she had a little pen, but apparently she put an X on that little guard jack there, but, um, yeah, so I don't know if I was supposed to stop there or not. Uh, I don't remember her saying anything about that little guard shack going into the second building here. All I know is I'm supposed to come to door eight and sit and wait until they, uh, tell me I'm good to come and, uh, back in here, so, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Hopefully I don't get yelled at or screwed this up at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, some of these places are really big and really, uh, discombobulated that, uh, you know, especially if you come here on a weekend and, uh, the regular people aren't here and it ain't busy and you can't watch everybody else that's been here a hundred times go in and out. So hopefully I don't, uh, I don't get scalded here. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, if I have a chance, it doesn't look like we yelled at or anything. I'll throw this camera on the back and I'll back in and. And uh, hopefully it'll record and not shut off halfway through the uh, video. Um, well, not camera, my phone. Um, I, was, I was just looking at, um, what was it, a uh, GoPro Hero 8, I think it was, over at Walmart over here in Gary, Indiana, but they were all out, and I didn't feel like buying a 10. So, um, you know, $299 is good enough for me. I don't feel like spending like $400. Uh, it'd be different if I had thousands of views a day and stuff. So, um, it, it, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's a waste of time. You know, I, I enjoy doing the videos and stuff, but I mean, I just don't want to, um, uh, over leverage my, uh, myself, I guess you could say. So, all right, well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to sit here and, uh, wait and hopefully somebody comes and gets me.
the heat coming off of it already. I'll go over to the window here. Hopefully I'm going to yell at that. They smelt it and make it right here. It's all recycled steel, they said, U.S. steel, so. Pretty cool, huh? Oh man, I had somebody come up and yell at me for, uh, for doing that, so we'll see how, how this goes. He didn't really yell at me. He said I didn't care. I even said, are they super mad or they just want to make sure I wasn't going to like walk around the whole damn place. And he's like, nah, they're not that mad. So, we'll see. I don't know. We'll find out here in a second. I'm hoping they didn't tell you to tell me that I'm banned. Cause I, cause I, I, I took a, a picture of them running, you know, running the smelt through the line there, and I got yelled. <laughs> yeah, he said, uh, whatever you do, don't uh, record stuff. Back there. Yeah. He said, just to let you know. All right. Uh -huh. So I'm not banned. The guy didn't seem like they're. They probably just didn't they want were me. They're getting ready to come down there. Like they, they, they didn't. Well, they did when I was getting out of there, and I figured, you know, I didn't know if they were. Uh, they probably thought they wanted to make. It was gonna like walk around and record the whole damn place with no one watching. Like, we're not even allowed to ever. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we're there's, there's only so many ways you can smelt steel, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, my youngest worked in the milk shop where they melted. Cause my, my kid likes watching them and shit, and he's six and. Yeah. Like, if we put it on, um, Facebook YouTube or, or YouTube, we get, we get fired. <laughs> I guess they're worried if someone catches an OSHA violation. We yeah. just had, um, like, uh, well, I guess maybe they should put a put a piece of paper over here or something on the window. It says no yeah. Probably, but... I was like, oh, here I go and get banned from all. No, he just said to let you know that you can't record. Yeah. All right. Well, if you talk to him, I gotta tell him sorry. You know, I'm not some <laughs> douchebag, so. Yeah, I didn't go over. I stayed on the other side of the window because I know when that stuff, if it drops, it you know it goes everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I know all that. Yeah. It hit it. And it really. I guess what he wasn't really all he wasn't already in the cotton uniform. You know the the fire suit. Bad time and like, yep. yep. And then, well, it wasn't leaking, and then all of a sudden it was just there. Yep. Yeah, it just had it just blew right then. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, like uh, my son had just left that position, and he just talked to the kid that it happened to, and he's been in the hospital for a while. Oh yeah, burn unit and everything. Yeah. yeah. It didn't like get his face and all that. Just got what probably. Oh, like, no, Interior burns and most of his, uh, like pretty much one of his body. It even melted so his. It didn't uh, get his face though, right? Mm, oh, it, it did. Yeah, it melted his hard hat. Oh, he, he didn't. Looking down oh, he didn't have the the suit it, it, on. He it, was it, just like regular. Yeah, he um. He didn't have that silver suit on. He was just like regular. Yeah, he was. Uh, oh, so it was just like really bad. He's just yeah, walking by doing like his job. Like he was put, um, looking down into like the whatever it was and. It must have like the wire hit underneath and it blew it up. Oh. Yeah. He's well, like I guess he's lucky he's alive then. He can still see and everything, right? As far as I know. Yeah. Mm. It was dad though. Now you still go, still be me. working here, I guess, right? 
hopefully he's gonna be a lifer now hopefully yeah. you know, I don't know what I mean? come back <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Hey, you can get just die driving around anymore. So. Oh, I know. Yeah, if it's so. your, I mean, if it's your. Oh, you need me to sign any of this? You give it back to you? Uh, nope. It should be that signature that I gave you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. No problem. Well, thank I you very much. Uh, water. Oh, no, nah, I got water and sure. soda and everything. So all right. I'm all right. Well, thank you very much, ma'am. Well, you have a good weekend. Hey, you too. And hope, be safe. hope your son is safe well, and yeah, everything. Thank else. you. Yep, yeah, thank all you. All three of my sons work here. It terrifies me, but a job's a job. Oh, uh, there's a lot worse jobs out yep. there. Trust me. So have a good one. Yep. Then. And I guess what we just tarp right up over here, like. Um. Yeah. You have to tarp in the tarping yep. station. Yep. All right. Yeah. All right. No problem. If you have any I questions, um, they fixed. Well, they kind of fixed the phone, so if you call that number, it rolls. Me now. Yeah, I think when I called you, I guess I called it was you I called, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 I guess yeah. it worked. I went on to Google and called right off the Google number, so oh, okay. I guess it's the same number. I don't All know. Right. All right, yep, Thank thanks. I got a debate when I delete this. I, I'm gonna probably have to delete me saying the name of the company and stuff here and uh, you know put it up. All right, well now, nah, what's the chances of seeing my YouTube video? So, uh, yeah, that's the way it is. Everybody's got, you know, shit happens. It's just, it's just what happens. So, all right, I'm gonna uh, throw this up in the back here and then. Uh, I guess uh, I'll chain this and tarp it and everything. So. Alright, I think I'm alright. I don't think they... They don't care if you fall out here and get killed. They got no cameras on you out here, so... You know, they want to make sure they can't be liable at all. So, uh, we're just gonna tarp up here and yeah. I'll knock you over, get these chains and tarp and everything off. And we're gonna do, I guess, pour across the top. That will do three across the top. I got it strapped to, so.
either way, when I load this, I probably would record me unloading it. So, either way, if they don't want their pieces of steel to be recorded, just probably put a note in the window. They absolutely were no recording. Like I said, I can see why somebody walked around because I know it is still. So. And even people that work here can easily get hurt, just like that poor guy. Shit happens. Too many are trying these things.
Alright, I'm gonna stop recording this for a second and figure out how I'm gonna chain this. How, you know, it's not very high. And uh, when I'm done chaining, I'll show you how right, I did you it. See, they're different. They're different heights. So if you chain it, you see how there's a gap there, and it's not really holding that, that inner one in. So that's why you have to either belly strap or belly chain or whatnot. So what I ended up doing, is if you look down in there, you can see right, right there. I fed it up around pieces of steel the chains weren't touching and I belly strapped them but well, once you get the chains on and plus that you know that's that stack right there steel so heavy it uh you know it ain't gonna move them when you tighten these straps up as you can hear they're not going anywhere I only was able to get uh, four belly strapped on there but if you can see see how they're different heights that's that's what kills people that's what freaking kills people. Same thing on the other side. I'll show you on the other side. Because when you stop, they slide forward and they come right out. So that's why, uh, you know, I might have took, instead of about 30 minutes to chain and strap this thing, I've probably been here about an hour almost just chaining and strapping. So when you do that, you know, the whole load can shift forward if, you, you know, if you're not paying attention. Like I'll show you this other piece over here. Like you see the chain? <laughs> See, guys will do that, and they'll be like, yep, good to go. It's not touching the load. All it's doing is touching the outside. If this thing decides to slide, which it could, because there's gaps in between them, in between all of them, there's no way they can bring them together, I guess. Uh, you know, I even asked. Uh, this is the stuff that gets people killed. These are the loads that shift. That's why I got so many chains and straps uh, through them. And then I'm going to show you here. Now I'm not 100% sure that this is technically the right way to do this. Um, this is just the way I've learned and I've always 
done it. You know, when you don't have enough room here, you know, for the uh, ratchet binder to be able to actually pull the chain and still be able to get the ratchet body, you know, it'll, it'll jam up between trying to put the ratchet binder uh, up and down. Well, you run the chain through your spool, up over a spool, and then back down, preferably a spool, not a stake pocket. But uh, this is a written hour, so these state pockets are, to me, they look a little bit thicker than, you know, your average utility state pocket. And then I just put the chain through the rub rail right next to the spool. And then you just, uh, you just, uh, you know, take the binder to it and tighten the binder up. And then there you go. That's what I did on the other side. On these, you should take the hooks. When you hook them, instead of hooking away from you, you should hook towards you. Like, see, this one didn't do it, but this one did. It keeps it up off of your, up off your rail. If you see, it's digging into the rail, which, eh, hey, you know, trailer's meant to be used for work. It's not meant to uh, look like a show trailer. So, see, this is, this is, this is good. Like how this went, how it's keeping it up off the rail, and you're not touching the rail when you're tightening your binder up. That's the way to do it. Same thing. Well, no, let's see. That's touching. See, this, this is touching the rail. Um, and then when you get stuff like this, you know, uh, it sucks because I should have did this inside. I should have tried putting belly straps on. I didn't know how high and different the, uh, the, the loads of steel were going to be. But, you know, that's things you got to watch when you're loading. Because uh, it makes your job a lot easier to throw the belly straps over stuff while they're loading than it is to fish them underneath here. Because then when you fish them, you cut yourself, you get your arms all dirty. You know, it's it's no fun. So that's just uh, that's my little uh, tutorial on how to uh, secure steel, especially when, like I said, you got see you got different heights. And like I said, it's the guys will throw straps over, and this whole bundle right here, this whole bundle will just be chilling there. You know, they hit the brakes, and that bundle just goes in the you know into the truck. Right now, those two little bundles and that one on the end, I got a belly strap. I got four of them, two in the front, two in the rear going up, over, under, and over, and under again. So unless it decides to cut the straps, which I hope it ain't, because it's pretty round it. Uh, yeah, they're, they're at least, uh, you know, at least only maybe a few of these will come out and try to pierce the trailer instead of the whole load. So if I ever have to stop or I hit something. So I'm gonna set this up and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna tarp this. Uh, this is all sharp, all these little corners. So I'm gonna get out. Um, I'm gonna get out moving blankets and I'm gonna set moving blankets on all this stuff. So, uh, yep, that's what you're gonna see next. So here it goes. I tell you what, the other guy was next to me. He didn't care. He just did what I, actually, I think his load might have been level. So he was in and out of here in probably about an hour. We tarp in and secured his load.
go ahead and just try to center this tarp as much as you can. I like to do is after I do this, and when I'm up there, I like to feel and make sure my fluid line is still, you know, still the same spot I had it. Because if you don't do that and you move it, you rip that light open. I tried to equal that out as best as I could. I'm gonna move this, I'm gonna show you something. Cause guys don't think about this either, about your wood, your dunnage that you got on here. New, new dunnage will usually go through tarps if you're not careful. Mine's older dunnage, so it's rounded off, so it's not too bad, but I'm gonna show you what to do anyway. Th these are just little things you gotta, you know, remember. All right, you see this piece of dunnage? It's under there. See, it's rounded off. It probably won't go through there. But if you had new pieces of dunnage, you know, it will cut through this tarp, especially with it flopping around in the wind. Take these spongy. Now, when you do this, 
you don't want to leave your bungee hooks up so the bungee hooks go to, to the uh you know through the tarp you just you just want to keep the bungee hooks down or even you know put the bungee hooks down in here just pretty much wrap them around you can do this with duct tape rope whatever you want now i don't have to worry about that tarp beating through in the wind here so i'm going to do the other three here and uh I'll come back all right so we're going to fold the tarp under Bungee it, I guess. Let's see. How long I get here? Here's the spot you can push the boat under the better. on my tarps. These tarps are six years old. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's probably only really kind of bad in six years. Or six to eight years, only been used. Uh, maybe three years of those six. So I guess they know that their cross members are different. So you can't really take his bungees and strap them underneath their cross members. But they actually were nice and they drilled two holes on their cross members. So you can, I guess, hold your bungee up, I guess. That's really the only real reason you would have those, cross, those little holes there in those cross members. Uh, unless they do it for something to manufacture. Since it's windy, I would already have these corners. It's really windy. I'd already have these corners locked down. So what you do is you start out. I was just about to say, you now what you want to do is strap your corner so you don't start going my way. Alright, let me check the other side, make sure the height's still the same. The tarp ain't lopsided, I wonder how it does look lopsided. Gonna be one of those two hour securement tarp, tarp jobs here.
that there. The front chain's down inside. It's a little pain. The bunch fly somewhere. Put your bunnies too, but let's get one on the front. two bunches on each corner at least or at least one or whatnot because as you saw in the video there if it's still recording that's exactly what happens when it's windy your truck takes off down the road and then sometimes like i said you have to retarp you have to pull the car back up and get it back up on there because you're just going to rip it you can't just slide it back over the whole load and up onto the you know up onto the steel you'll just freaking shred your car Right there is an example of how to tarp on a windy day. All right, I'm back. I'll that is that is some time out of this video, that's for sure. Let's see if you're even recording. All right. No, you're not. All right, so I'm, I'm hurrying up and get out of here. I know the video stopped. I don't know what point you saw. Hopefully you saw the tarp fly off and everything right as I was just making a point to uh, bungee the corners. But here's the tarp job. I'll show it more when I get to the truck stop because hopefully I don't get yelled at for just doing this here on their property because uh, they weren't too happy, like I said earlier. Uh, you'll see. I don't know when I get back and done editing this. So let's get in the truck and get out of here. And, uh, you know, I took a little bit of time uh, loading. And then, like I said, I had to do, uh, you know, extra belly job on this because my the load's different heights and, you know, I'm not one of those guys that say, ah, you know, smack the strap, good enough. You know, I'm not one of those guys, or, or that'll hold. Yeah, so, uh, let me get out of here. Um, got here, what, 9.30? It's like, uh, it's like 11.30, a little after 11.30 now, 11.35. All right, yeah, so 9.30 to 11.35, that's how long it took to load and, uh, and strap and tarp and everything, so. Um, when I get to a truck stop, I'll, uh, you know, I'll talk about this load a little bit, and you know, but uh, I got I got to get out of here. I got I want to try to do 400 miles today, so we'll see. All right, I'll see you.